Hello again. We are back, and this time we're going to talk about how to get some graffiti and some grunge uh, into our scenes. And again, just helping them, helping the scene feel more real and lived in. So I'm only going to do this on a few different uh, parts, uh, but I would encourage you to do this for the whole scene to make everything feel a little bit more realistic. So uh, let's get started, and we're going to start here with this graffiti, um, and I'll walk you through. I'll quickly show you how I made it, um, and then we'll get into how to actually apply it in Blender and do a few different adjustments. So it's not just affecting the color channel, it's also affecting the metallic and the roughness maps. Okay, so I'm going to close this, and here's where we left off the last scene. Let's see if we zoom in here. You can see our glass is nice and dirty, and now we need to make this door also kind of dirty. So I'm going to go to local view on this. And I'm also going to, uh, I'm going to jump into Photoshop here. And I'll quickly cover how I made that graffiti. Uh, the first thing I did is I just did a Google search for, for free fonts. I found a few different graffiti fonts that I liked and I installed them. Once I had those, uh, then I went into Photoshop and this is what I made. Now, uh, this consists of three different layers. So the first are three different text layers. And the, the graffiti uh, font that I used is, uh, I can't remember, what is it called? It is called, uh, it's called Grafonti, G-R-A-F-F-O-N-T-I. And if I just do a search for it, that's the first option here. Okay, so it's 100% free. There's three files. There is a, a drop shadow font, there's a solid font, and then there is a gradient fill font, or fill font. Okay. So I use, this is the drop shadow, and I just, let me hide the grunge layer too. Here we go. So I just typed in the word unplug and chose a color that I liked. And then on top of that, I layered a solid color. And I used a gradient and a clipping mask to make that a gradient fill. And then on top of that, I layered in an outline. So that's my graffiti. And then just to make it a little bit more interesting, I added a grunge map to it. An additional thing that you could do uh, is maybe this is kind of worn, um, something like that. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to put it into a group and give it a layer mask. And then I'm going to grab a brush here and right click. And let's go with a, let's see, what do we got? Maybe a special effects brush. I am by no means a Photoshop expert. Just get that out of the way now. Um, I was looking for kind of a rough, grungy brush, and that's probably going to be my best bet there. I'm guessing. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so that's a kind of a... I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, but I'm going to set this to black, and basically I'm just painting a mask. Um... Make sure I'm actually painting on that layer. And it doesn't look like I am. Ooh, okay, there it goes. So you see when I do that, the mask is applied. Oh, my size is. Okay. Oh, my strength is way down. As I said, I'm not a Photoshop expert. Okay, um, those of you Photoshop experts probably know exactly what I did wrong. Um, but basically the preset I was using was a smudge brush. So I changed to a different preset that isn't a smudge brush. And basically I'm just using this to kind of break up the edges. Okay, kind of do something like that and just kind of go around and Uh, entirely optional step, but can help integrate this into the environment a little bit more if we 
do something like that. Maybe towards the bottom, it got a little bit more worn uh, from people opening and closing the door and kicking it, kind of where all the water collects. Uh, we can change the size as well, get some variation in there. And I'm doing this all on a on a mask layer so that I'm non-destructive. Okay, just working with layer masks in Photoshop. This isn't a Photoshop tutorial, but I'm I will just kind of show you the general ideas behind what I'm doing. And maybe we're gonna give a little bit of okay, that's that's probably good enough for this. Okay, so once we have our uh, graffiti texture, oh, and I did also, I kind of glossed over this, I did overlay a grunge um, texture on it. It's just been set to multiply, and I brought the opacity down. So once we have that, we can save this. I'm going to save this as PNG so that I have transparency. That's important. And I'll go with a 2K texture. I'll click Save. And I got my graffiti unplugged. I'm just going to save this as version two. Okay. So we'll minimize that and we'll jump back here into Blender. And I've got my door selected. I'm in local view. And I will navigate to where I saved that texture. Which is in the textures folder. And I'm just going to drag that right on in to my shader editor. And I can't see anything right now. So first I'm going to with that selected control shift T. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Uh, control shift click is what I wanted. There we go. And you can see that the texture is there. Uh, I'm going to hit control T and bring up some mapping nodes. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to connect it to... Let me slide this up here. I don't want to connect it to the mapping nodes that are controlling my base kind of door metal texture. Because I've got scales set that I don't want the graffiti to also replicate. So if I if I do plug it in, okay, now the graffiti is rotated and it's also duplicated. So I don't want that. I'm gonna unconnect that, connect a brand new mapping and texture coordinate node. I'm still using the UVs, but I'm able to transform it independently. Now, the other thing you'll note is when I increase that scale, now I have multiple copies and I don't want multiple copies. So, we want to, in the texture here, where it says repeat, we want to just set the texture to clip. So it'll only have a one instance of it. Okay. Now what we can do is focus on placement. So I'm going to adjust the scale. Let's see, there's 0.7. Let's drag the X location. We'll drag the Y location. I'm holding down shift so I get less control. Or, sorry, more control. Uh, let me turn on screencast keys. There we go. So holding down shift. I'm going to add some rotation to it, which I believe, yep, Z is what I want there. Okay, something like that. I'm okay if it goes off the borders a little bit. Okay, so there's my texture placed. Now what we need to do is we need to combine that with my base texture. Okay, because right now if I control shift click on principled BSDF, you see that I imported my graffiti. I just it's not connected up, so it's not influencing my material whatsoever. So the way we're going to do that is through some mix RGB nodes. So let's start with uh, just one mix RGB right there. And I'm going to put my base color into the first slot. And I'm going to put my graffiti into the second slot. And then we're going to connect this up to the base color. Okay. So by default, you can see that it's kind of faded and we're not getting the colors that we want. And that's why we need to adjust the factor and this. Um, actually, we can leave the mix leave the node set to mix. I'm not going to change the blending mode, but we do need to um, change how the factor is decided. And that's why uh, we exported with a PNG, so we have that alpha channel. So I can drag the alpha, which if I control uh, shift click on 
texture node and go to alpha. Okay, we can see what's white and what's black. So I can drag this alpha uh, into my factor. And this will decide, control shift click on my mix node. Right. So now anywhere that's got graffiti is getting the full graffiti color and any anywhere else is getting the normal base color. Okay. Now there's one thing that I did notice here, let me go back to my alpha, is this isn't showing up as pure white. So I'm going to add in a um, let's just do a RGB curves. I'm going to drop this on the alpha line here and control shift click. So we're looking at the preview here. I'm going to try to make this clear. I know when we get a lot of nodes, it can be kind of confusing. I'm going to try to not to make it too confusing. So we've got the alpha channel and I just want to uh, bring the white. That's the wrong way. I'm going to go over. You see it's just lightening, brightening that area. Okay, just so we're getting more of a pure, excuse me, pure white. Yeah, it's just going to be a little bit more true. Something like that. That will work. I mean, there's other ways you can do this. You can also do this with like a contrast node. If we just go to color and contrast, just up the contrast. Anyway, it works. But I just want to make sure that that's a little bit brighter. Okay, so we'll go back to our color mix node, control shift click on it. And we can see that that's the color mix. And we control shift click on our principal node. You kind of see the final output. Now the lighting is a little bit dull. So let's change the preview HDRI to something with some light to it. There we go. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, if we look at this in rendered view, Take a second to load up. Oh, we don't have any light in our scene, so let me turn off scene world. There we go. So that's good, and you can see that it also follows our displacement map, which is really nice. Okay, but um, I want to also have this affect the metallic and the roughness. So if we let's see if we can kind of see. If we control shift click on our metallic and preview that node, here's our metallic map. So basically all the painted areas of the metal are not metallic and then just the little bolts or rivets or whatever they are holding the, the door together, those are metallic. But now that we have paint over the top of it, those shouldn't be metallic anymore. It doesn't make sense if they're painted, it shouldn't really be reading as metallic. So I want to cover that up. And I'm going to do that with another mix node. Okay, so let me kind of zoom in here. I'm going to hit Shift A, add color, mix RGB. I'm going to drop that on top of my metallic node. Let me move this down a little bit. And I'll control Shift click on that mix node so we can see what we're getting. Here's just the metallic. Here's the mix node. So we're mixing our texture with this um, kind of gray color. I'm going to set this to black because I want any area that is painted with the graffiti to have zero metallic to it. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to use again our uh, alpha channel factor or our alpha channel as the factor. So when we do that, we see that now we have this area across where all of those rivets that were metallic are now black. And so we've affected that texture and we're doing it all just based off of our single texture up here. And so here's the before and the after. Right. We'll see, this might be kind of tricky to notice, but we're not really getting, okay, you can see here's a rivets right here, or a bolt, we're not really getting any metallic sheen off of that as we move around. Okay, so the last thing is roughness. And the roughness, I just want this to be kind of a glossier paint than the door, because I imagine this paint is, uh, the graffiti is obviously newer than the door. 
Um, and so I figured it'll have, it won't has, have lost its luster nearly as much as this old and weathered door. So to do that again, we're going to use a mix node. Oh, I also wanted to set, I guess it doesn't really matter, but we will set the metallic to multiply. And I don't think it's really going to make much of a difference here. But we're getting, we're getting black either way. Uh, but I'm going to take that metallic node, or the, the metallic mix node here, and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to drag that down onto the roughness. And we'll control shift click on that. So here's the roughness texture just by itself. And then here's with it, we got the multiply. And what I want to do is we're going to use the alpha channel again as the factor. Okay, so now we can see the results of that. So that's, I mean, that's pretty cool right there. But so what this is doing, just kind of break this down as far as what all this is doing and why we're doing this. We have our texture, our roughness texture, and that's saying, uh, again, black is zero, white is one. So we're all getting this kind of modeled roughness. The dark areas are slightly more glossy and reflective than the lighter areas. And then now we're using our alpha channel to mix in the color that we have in the second slot here, which in this case is black. But we can adjust this, and this will in turn um, indicate the roughness of the graffiti. So if we just bring this up, I, I still want to, I think I want to keep this darker, but we can bring this up a little bit. I am going to keep this on multiply. Yeah, so now those areas are going to be glossier. And I'll control shift click on principled BSDF. So we're just looking at the final output. Okay. And you can see kind of as we orbit around here, you can see how that highlight moves across the graffiti area area and is less prominent on the other areas. Let's go to more representative. Okay, so there you can really see how that highlight sweeps across the graffiti, but it doesn't really show up on the door. Now this might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to increase that roughness some more. Maybe I'll go even more. Okay, that's better. Okay, so again, we can look at our just our multiply map. And that's that's the the map that's doing it, and then here's the results, and we can look at that in rendered view, and see what that's doing there. It certainly seems to be a little bit more subtle in rendered view, but it's there. Maybe I'll back that off just a little bit. We'll we'll, we'll increase the the difference there just for effect. So it's a little bit more obvious. Cool. All right. So we've got that. That's the graffiti on the door done. And I'll get out a local view here and let this load up. Um, so that's that's the first thing. Um, again, this graffiti just did this on the door, but you can pepper this all over the vending machine, uh, on the glass, on the pylons, on the truss anything and everything in the scene and you can do the same thing it doesn't have to just be graffiti it can be signs it can be stickers anything of that sort to help this environment feel more real and lived in you can also layer the graffiti it doesn't have to just be one word you can find multiple fonts and get kind of a bunch of different styles like if i go back into photoshop i know i have other fonts in here as well so maybe i'll add a new layer move this outside of the group come on there we go and then we'll say, let's see, what's another cyberpunk word? Um, I'll just go with matrix. Or we'll say enter the matrix. Okay. So I'll grab my text. Let's make the font, first of all, smaller. We'll go with 72. And then we'll change this. I've got one called... Subway. Okay. 
And then maybe we move it up here. And make it white, like somebody used one of those like white pens, the, the white like ink pens. Um you know, bring it down, go here. I know these are conflicting statements to both unplug and enter the matrix, but whatever. This is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, and then you can layer this up and, and really get some elaborate graffiti. So spend a lot of time on this. So the more time you spend, the better the results are that you'll get. Okay, we'll save that. Uh, that's the graffiti. Uh, next, I want to cover. I had a little kind of stain here, so let's let's talk about that. I'm going to go with the wall. I'm going to local view on that, and we can do this much the same way that we did our graffiti. We've got our wall selected. And I found, I believe this was from CC Zero Textures. I'm fairly certain this is where I found it. Um, but it was a, yep, there it is, leaking asset. So this was the asset that I used for this uh, demonstration. And if we actually look at the texture files, okay, this is what they look like. Now, these are non-square textures. And this will cause a little bit of extra work for us. Um, what you could do is you could open these up in Photoshop and make them square. I'm not going to worry about that. I will just show you how you can make that adjustment in Blender. So what I'm going to do this is going to work a little bit differently. Because we have a full texture set and not just a, an image, a single colored image, uh, we're going to add a, a full other shader network. Or not a full, not a different network, but an, another shader node. So I'm going to, in our shader editor, just above, you can do this above or below, you can do this above. Shift A, add in a shader and principled BSDF. And then with that selected, I'm going to hit Control Shift T, and we will navigate to my texture library leaking 2k i'm going to grab everything except for the displacement texture um actually we could just grab we could grab displacement too since i'm already using displacement on the wall it's not going to be any extra for that so yeah we'll grab we'll grab all of them um i don't know if i'll yeah we'll just grab them all that opacity might not be necessary but you see it drags them all in. It also kind of moves them in the way. So I'm just going to hit G and just move them over here. So it's all better. Oops. Oh, it looks like I wasn't using displacement. And or it moved. I wasn't actually paying attention. But we'll disconnect that for now because I'm, I'm more worried about the rest. So let's first just go through and make sure that we have the correct colors in the correct slots. Let's see, roughness is roughness, and normal is normal. Okay, that's good, and displacement is using the displacement texture. Let's add in our color RGB curves, and we're going to invert the green channel on the normal map. There we go. Things are starting to run a little slow here. Okay. So that's good. Now we can't see anything that, that we're doing. So I'm going to control shift click on the output here. And now we can see our texture. We're also going to go into material preview. That'll speed things up. And we'll change our world HDRI to something a little bit brighter. Okay. So we can see here's what the texture looks like, but it's huge and it's distorted. So we need to fix those things. Uh, the first thing I think we will fix, well, we kind of have to do this in tandem, but we need to come over here to the mapping node and do some work. So we'll, let's first scale this way down. Or I guess in this case it's up, but something maybe like that. 
Okay, that's uh, going to be too small, because remember, we have this pipe here on the side. So I think what I'll do is I'll come out of local view. With the wall still selected, I'm going to hold down shift and select the pipe. And hopefully Blender doesn't crash here. Okay, we're good. And hit save. Uh, just to make sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is... Yeah, this works. Okay. All right, we'll go into local. So I have them both, and now I have this as reference. And much like with the graffiti, I want to set my textures here to not repeat. So I'm going to set this to clip. You can see when I set that on the color, the roughness and the uh, normal and the displacement are all still repeating. So we need to make sure we set all of the textures to not repeat. Okay, set that to clip. And the displacement will also set the clip, even though we're not currently using it. Okay. So now that we have that, now we can work on placing our texture. So we know we need to go over. Oops, we don't want to go that far. Okay, I'll keep sliding it. And we'll go up. Oops. There we go. Over a little bit more. Let's go negative three. Um, and then we can also see that our scale is off. And again, since we're not using a, a square texture, that's, that's why this happens. Um, but we do have this, what's supposed to be a circle. It's really great for our reference. So if I pull up the non-distorted image, you see that that is in fact a nice round circle. And so we can use that as reference so we know what we're going for. So I'll just have that open on my other screen. And we'll scale it in the x direction. And we want to go up with it. And now it's going to shift the texture around. So we need to go even further. So let's try 10. All right, how about 12? Set the location back to zero. Take a second. And when you get to this point of, of um, texturing, if Blender starts running slow, one, you can use smaller textures. You don't have to do 4K for everything. Um, but also save often, just in case Blender does crash. Now, if you're not recording your screen as you're doing it, you'll have probably better luck than I am. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I thought I hit enter. Okay, oh, it looks like we can probably go further. I'm going to set this back to zero. That way it's just not sliding around on me all over the place as I'm trying to adjust this. Now we can probably go a little bit higher. Let's try 15. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and I think the length is... Actually, the length is a little bit small, but we basically have a... I don't know, 4 to 1 or so relationship in the scale. So if I click and drag across all three of them, hold down shift and drag to the left, I can scale them up and actually no, it's not maintaining the relationship. Never mind. Um, but let's get the the Y and the Z scales correct. And then we can worry about the X. Okay, so that looks about the right height for what I want. So if we multiply this by 4, it looks like we want to be somewhere around 8.7, which is, I guess, what is the actual number? It would be uh, 2.17 times 4, 8.68. So it was pretty close. And that's looking pretty round. Uh, I can maybe back this off. Maybe we'll go 8.6. Okay. So we've got that scaled appropriately. Now we need to place it. Actually, looking at this, I might want to scale this up even more. I think I do. I think we're going to go a little bit past the bounds. I'm okay with this kind of goes off the edge on the bottom. 
but I'm thinking about how this is going to interact with the diameter of the pipe that goes into the wall. This is a much smaller diameter, and I just want it to read a little bit more accurately. So I think we'll go, we'll scale this up a little bit more. Let's go to a scale of like three, or I guess it would have to be down. Let's go 1.5. Mm, 1.8. And this we can go, I think we can do 1.8 times 4, and it'll do the math for us. It does. Okay, uh, I'll do that again if I was kind of zoomed out. But if you do 1.8, asterisk, 4, so you can actually do the math in the field, and hit enter, and Blender will calculate that for you, save you some time. All right, so let's get this positioned. Figure out what this needs to be. Okay. That looks negative uh, six point three four. Dial that back just a little bit. Negative six point three three. Your numbers may vary. Okay, and now we'll go in the y direction. I'll go in the positive y direction. There we go. Oop, too far. Okay, I think that's going to work. Zoom in there. Yeah, okay. Now, I believe this is actually meant for like a concrete wall. This isn't the most accurate of streaks yet. You can actually see if you look really closely at this concrete in there. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to just leave it. Um... But you could also do this with like a rusty texture or something like that. Um, you could even use like a rusty texture and then just use like the alpha channel of this to mask off the rust into the appropriate shape. All sorts of things that you can do. Um, okay, so we've got that positioned. Now we can work on the actual incorporation of this. And so the way that we're going to do that is since we're mixing full shaders and not just colors, we're going to use a mix RGB. Or, sorry, no, not a mix RGB, a mix shader. So shift A, add color, shader, and mix shader. I'm going to drag that mix shader node in, and we're going to combine that with, zoom out here. Okay, this is our original. Uh, wall shader, and then this is our grungy drip. So I'm going to grab in, drag these together so that they're both going into the mix shader. I think I'm going to reverse them. There we go. And then what we need to do is uh, the factor. And so the leaking textures had a, an opacity. And that's what we want to use. I'm going to use this opacity map as our factor. So I'm going to click and drag that in. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, we want the opacity to uh, move it up here. We want it to be in the same place as our leaks. So I'm going to connect the vector up. So it's using the exact same transformations. And we also need to make sure that we set this to clip and not repeat. And then if we control shift click on it, we can see that that's in the right spot. Okay, and now we can connect the color into the factor. Take a second, and there we go. So now we've got this leak that goes all the way down. It kind of looks corrosive because it's got the pock, mock, pock marks that eat into it. So I think it more or less works. Yeah, so let's look at this in rendered view. Okay. Now I think the kind of corrosiveness might be a little extreme. If that's the case, we can go down to our normal map here on the leaking texture and just back off that strength. Maybe we'll go to like 0.6 on that strength. Yeah, it's going to make that a little bit less extreme. Uh, the other thing we can do is with the color, 
let's say we want this to appear a little bit rustier, then we can make some adjustments to the color. So I'm going to add in a color. Um, let's go with a, start with a hue saturation. And I'm going to control shift click on that. So I'm just focusing on the color here. So let's adjust the color so it gets a little bit more red, not that red. Maybe something like that. Increase the saturation a little bit. Maybe not that much, 1.2. And then we'll bring that value down so it's a little bit darker. Kind of like the saturation up a little bit. Hmm. Maybe, okay, for demonstration purposes, anyway. Yeah, you see that's a little bit redder now. Um, maybe we'll also add in an RGB curves onto that and just kind of bring that down in general. Maybe I'll go to the green channel a little bit and just slightly dial off the green channel. It's going to take green out of it. It's going to shift it towards the red and the blue. Yeah, I think that's that's better for sure. Okay. We've got that. We've got our little rusty bit there. Again, I know there's more pipes. We can add similar things to the rest of the pipes. And the last thing I want to show is adding some kind of grunge to the bottom here. And so for that, we're going to do this a, a, another different way. Um, we can do it the way that we just did. Uh, if I bring up the texture that I'm planning on using, okay, we have this texture right here. Now this is another non-square texture. Um, but if I use this, well, I guess I'll, I'll let me show you um, kind of why this doesn't work quite as well as I would like it to. Yeah, so I've got my wall here, and um, in this case, it's just a single texture. So I'm going to I'm going to grab all of this stuff, and we're going to move this just over and out of the way. So this is going to be more like uh, the graffiti that we just added. I'm going to bring my texture in here. Okay, so I've got my um, it's called, what is it, moss decal, uh, but just, just dirty grunge at the bottom. I'm going to control T, add some mapping nodes to it, control shift, click on it. Okay, so here's my texture, and you'll see that it's stretched out again, so I need to bring the scale down in the Y direction. Okay, and I kind of zoom in on it, and we can compare it to our uh, non-distorted one, and looks like we're actually pretty good there on the scale. Maybe went a little too far, so I'll go like 6.5. Okay. Now, if I set this to not repeat, which I don't want it to do, the problem is that this is kind of a low-resolution uh, texture because I didn't want to pay for it. This is a free texture, so you can, you can buy a, a higher resolution. But the scale of the detail is such that I want to scale this down. Okay, I want the whole thing to be, maybe if we go to like, let's say we go two and this was 6.5, so now that's going to be 13. Okay, so if I do that, I'm closer to the scale of the detail that I want, but it's not repeating across. And if I set this to repeat, well, now it's repeating the whole thing. And I could use a mask, um, and do some additional node work, but I can also do it in Photoshop, and it's maybe a little bit more intuitive for me to do it in Photoshop, so let's do it that way. So I'm going to change this from repeat uh, back to clip, um, although it doesn't really matter because we're going to end up changing this anyway. But let's, let's select the wall, and I'm going to go to my UV editing workspace. So will take just a second. What I want to do is I want to export the UVs and use them as reference in Photoshop. 
Okay, so here's my UVs. We'll hit A to select them all, and we're going to UV, export UV layout, and we're going to go to my textures folder, and I will call this wall right, because this is the right wall, UVs. Okay, and we will set the size to 2048 by 2048, and click export UV layout. Once I have that, then I'm going to go into Photoshop. I can close this file. I don't need that open anymore. And then let me navigate to my UVs, and I'll open them with Photoshop. OK, so here's my UVs. Now what I can do is bring in my textures. And you can see it's really small to begin with. Uh, but I can scale it up a little bit. And now I can manually place this. So we'll just line it up with the bottom for now. now. The other thing that you want to be careful of when you're copying textures like this is you want to make sure that if you do repeat them, it's not very obvious that they're repeating. Oops, don't want to move the UV, so let me lock the UV layer. There we go. Okay, so something like that, and then I can copy that layer. And we'll move this over. Okay, so we don't really notice that copy. And again, with, with this part of the door being cut out, we're not going to see that. So it's going to be even less obvious that the copy is there. Uh, the other thing to note is if we go back to my scene, uh, and we'll go to, let me just go to the general layout view here. You see that the wall actually does extend below the ground. So we don't want it to sit right at the bottom. Uh, we can use the bottom of the doorway as our point of reference. So I'll grab both of those layers, and let me zoom in here, and let's shift them up a little bit. I'll give it a little bit of overlap there. Okay, there we go. So that's looking pretty good. Turn that off. Um, again, if you're this far into it, it might not be a bad idea to actually just do all of your texturing in Photoshop, bring in whatever other kind of graffiti, textures, decals, whatever you want to do. But I'll just leave this at grunge for now to keep it simple. And I'm going to hide my UVs. And we will export this again with transparency. We'll do go at 2K size, we'll click save. And we'll call this wall right um, bottom grunge. OK, so we've got that. We'll jump back into Blender, go to shading. Now, what I want to do, here's where I imported that texture before. I'm going to change my selected texture. So let me go to my project, it's in textures, and this was this file right here. So I'm bring that in. Now my mapping is all messed up, so let me set the scale back to one for everything. Okay, you can see my texture showed up. That's great. And now we can mix this in with our um, base wall texture. So this is the metal tiles, not the leaking rust that I just added for the pipe. So I'm going to add in a uh, mix RGB node, combine that with the color, drag the color from my grunge into the second slot here on the mix node. Control shift click to see that. Okay, you can see the mix isn't really what we want. Let me grab the alpha channel and set that to the factor. Let's also quickly look at the alpha channel here. And it looks like we can probably increase the contrast on that. So let me add in a color brightness contrast. Plug the alpha into the color, and we'll grab the color and plug that into the factor. So now we can adjust the contrast here. Oh, it's also control shift click on it. So contrast of one. Let's see what it was before it was at zero. There's one. You can see that it's also making the edges a little bit rougher, and I don't really like that. 
I like the kind of the subtlety there, so maybe I'll just leave it. Yeah, I think in this case, maybe I'll just leave it. So I'll hit Control X. That will delete that and maintain connections. Okay. So we've got that. Um, I think that's probably looking pretty good. Yeah, I think that's that's going to work. So now I want to do similar things to the roughness and the metallic. So let's add in another color and mix RGB. Okay, I'm gonna. These nodes are gonna get a little bit out of hand. Maybe I'm gonna try to not do that. Okay. So with the base texture, the wall is very metallic. And this actually doesn't even have a metallic map, which is a little weird. I feel like it should, but uh, everything is metallic. And we don't want these rusty parts to be quite as metallic. So I want to mix those together. Because this is, I mean, to my mind, this is a combination of, of rust and dirt and grime. So I want to back, back off that, uh, me the metallic nature of it. So right now the metallic is set all the way up to one. So in this mix node, I'm in the color one slot, I'm going to set that all the way up to white, and that's going to represent our, our one here. And then in the color two, I'm going to grab the alpha mat. Well, I think we can probably make this work with the alpha mat. Yes. I'm going to plug that into the factor. I'll plug the mix into metallic. Okay. So this mix is going to be, I'm going to rename this, we'll call this metallic mix. And I'll set this to multiply. Well, I'll leave it on mix for now. I'm going to control shift click on it so that we can see just the preview of this. Okay, and you can see uh, the alpha channel, we've got our default white values. And then anywhere else is getting a the darker color. So let me bring this down. I will set this to multiply. There we go. Okay, so as I bring this down, it's going to dial back that metallic quite a quite a bit. I'm going to go pretty dark on it, something like that. Okay, I think that's a, a pretty good mix there for the metallic. And then oh, I've got this rid of that node. Okay, so there's our, our updated metallic values, and then I'm going to do a similar thing to the roughness. Slide that over here. I'm going to shift A, add in a new mix RGB. We're going to set it to multiply. We will bring in the alpha from our grunge texture into the factor. Control shift click on multiply so we can see that. And we definitely want to make the dirty areas rougher. So I'm going to set color two to be a much brighter color. And actually, instead of multiply here, we're going to set this to screen. OK, so now those areas are going to be brighter. And yeah, I think I'm going to go pretty high up on that. And I'm not going to worry about the normal map. OK. So we've got all those three things figured out. Let's look at our final output here. OK, it actually looks like, looks like the mix on our color isn't doing too great. So let's take a look at that. Let's try overlay, see if we get a better blend. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, we're getting... Something isn't looking too great, so let me see if I can figure that out. Okay, so I was going through here, and I think it's the it's the screen roughness node. So if I hover over it and hit M and mute it, you can see that it's those hard edges go away. Okay. 
So uh, let's let's see what we can do for adjustments. We can try. I don't think clamp's really going to do much here. No. So let's go back to multiply, and I think that might be better. Uh, and then also looking at this, I guess we can look at this in render view before you make the final decision. But I'm guessing we're going to want to bring the the tone of this down. I think it's maybe a little bit bright. And we'll go back here. Yeah, I just want to make it darker. So let's do that. Let's go back to here. Okay. So let's go over here. We're going to add in a... I guess we can start with a hue saturation. Drag it onto color here. Whoa. That's something. That's not what that color should look like. Hmm. I wonder if that's a drawing error. Because if we look at our texture, I mean, that's not... It's certainly not what I exported. And if we look at our actual exported texture, this is the actual texture from that saved out. So I don't know what Blender thinks it's doing. It doesn't do it on the overlay, so I think we're probably fine. It's just a weird, a weird thing that's happening there that I don't really like. But let's bring the value of this down. Definitely want to make it darker. Maybe increase the saturation a little bit. I think the color's probably pretty good. Bring that value down more. So let's try like 0.15. Uh, 0.12, just a little bit, a little bit darker. Back to the overlay. Okay, that's good. Or better, anyway. And we're still getting these outlines, so maybe... Alright, something, what's doing these outlines now? Looks like it's the color. is the color. Okay, so I think what we're going to need to do... Hmm. Okay, no, it's not the color, it's the metallic. It's the metallic mix that's doing it. So let's... Let's see, what can we do? Let's set it to... Just mix. Nope, don't like that. How about overlay? Overlay is better. Okay. So we'll do that. And let's look at this in rendered view. And let's get out a local view. Let me save it first. And then we'll get out a local view here. Sorry, just hit the mic. Let that go. No, this isn't the moody lighting, so I'll switch back to that in a second. Actually, we can might as well do it now. Turn on scene world. And the, the kind of the dark and moody nature of this will help hide some of the some of the crimes there. But yeah, you see uh, this it just feels better. It feels like a grungier, more lived in world uh, than it did before, and it feels less fake because we're not seeing that really obvious clean line there. Um, yeah, so again, this is the type of thing that you'd want to do not just on one or two things, but on a lot of different things. And the more time you spend, the better everything is going to look. Um, but this should give you a few different ways that you can add additional surface detail and imperfection to your, your models. You can either do it just in Blender with you know a nice square texture like we did with the graffiti, um, if it's a non-square texture, then you may need to do some additional scaling and, and positioning, like we did with the leak that you can't really see here. Um, or, 
uh, you can do it in Photoshop and just bring in a finished texture and then do some layering that way, like we did down here at the base. And the reason why you can't see that leak is because I don't have it connected. Now if we connect that up, you'll see that kind of come into resolution. So let me let me real quick just kind of go over the node tree because I, I can see that this is a the, certainly the most complex node tree that we've we've gone over. So let's take a second uh, once the textures load. There we go, and kind of cover what's going on here on this node tree. And we'll go into local view on the wall, so we can just focus on that. So here's our wall. Okay. So this whole first top half is the leak, so I'll, I'll come to that last. Here's our main... Oops. I don't know why that snapped over there. Here's our main texture, and then this is all the grunge that we just added. So, if we just look here, we have our main wall textures. These four textures. And that's just the metal tiles. We've got color, roughness, normal, and displacement, which we're not using. So actually, because we're not using it, I'm just going to hit delete on that and simplify this further. Okay, so we have our main shader. and We have our textures and our texture mapping nodes over here. And then our textures, if we ignore this multiply uh, node for a second, we're just flowing directly into our shader output. And then we've got our RGB curves here to invert the green channel on our normal texture because the, the normal map was meant for DirectX 12 and Blender uses OpenGL. All the kind of basic texturing stuff that we've done for the last couple of weeks. Now, if we go up here, these nodes are what we're using to mix in this bottom grunge. Okay, so we have our actual grunge texture, which is this right here. Again, I don't know why it looks weird, but it should look like that. All right, no. It's just looking really weird today for some reason. But we've got a grunge texture. It has its own mapping nodes, so we can control the placement separately from our base texture, so we don't have it repeating it or anything like that. It is set to clip, so it's not repeating. Okay. And then we have a hue saturation value node just to darken it up. So here's without it, whoops, and here's with it. See, it's darker, it's a little bit more saturated, feels a little bit more like rusty dirt than it did before. And then I am combining that with our base color with a mix RGB node set to overlay. And we can, uh, we'll call this color overlay. Okay. So it's set to overlay, and we're using the alpha channel. So we're using the uh, transparent values of our grunge texture to control which color it's using. So all the areas that are transparent are getting the base color, and all the areas that are not transparent are getting our grungy texture. And we're doing a similar thing with the metallic. So as our base, we have what our, our base metallic value, which was one. So we have that set to white. Okay. And then we have color two, which is our what we want our grunge metallic value to be, which in this case is a pretty dark value. And again, we're using the alpha channel of our texture, the transparency of our grunge texture to drive that factor. It's also set to overlay. Okay, it looks like this as it loads. Give it just a second. It should be loading. Interesting. And there's, a, if it's set to mix, and then if we go back to overlay, I don't know why it's not loading now. It's there, I promise. Hmm. Well, thanks for cooperating, Blender. I appreciate it. Okay. I would have set it to... So you know what I think it was? I think it was just not visible. So we do want that set to mix. Glad I went over this again. Uh, and then lastly, we have our roughness, which again, we're mixing our roughness with the, the gamma adjustment. 
um, mixing that using the alpha channel, using our transparency to drive the factor, and then the base color is our new adjusted color. So this one is really subtle. Um, we can adjust this if we want to make it a little bit darker. Okay, That's mixing in the new roughness values, and then we click down here, we can see the final result of that. And yeah, this metallic is just not really working too well. So let's try... Might need to make some additional adjustments there. And maybe we'll just kind of leave it like that. Look at the metallic mix that's coming out of it. Um, let's see. Let's maybe we do this. We set the base color to one. Bring that color in. No, because we're getting this overlay. So maybe we'll just leave it. Because for whatever reason. Transparency is... Okay, so that's working. That's what I want. Okay, I think we're good. Sorry, I don't know why. Maybe it's just a, a draw error or like a memory error. I don't know. That's what I should be doing. So alpha into factor, and we're using mix. Okay. So all those things come together. Oh, that's right, because it then overlays like that, and that's not what I want. Just because we're getting... And I was looking a little bit splotchy and a little bit low res. I could probably get better results with a high resolution texture. But we'll, we'll just put it back to overlay and deal with that. Yeah, so that's that's all the bottom nodes here. And then all of these nodes up here. I'm, and again, I'm going to get rid of the displacement because we're not using it. Just simplify things a little bit more. All the nodes up here are for this leak. right here. Okay, so here's the leak. And so if you remember, the leak has three different textures. We've got a base, a roughness, and a normal. It's got its own mapping nodes. Uh, all the leaks are set to clip so that we're not repeating the texture. And then we've got our, our normal inverting the green channel on the normal map, okay, just like we normally would. And then we've got our roughness is plugged directly into roughness. And then we have our base color, okay, which looks like this. And then I added a hue saturation value to adjust the color. And then an RGB curves to darken it up a little bit and take some more of the green out of it. Okay, and then that's getting plugged into base color here. So there's our leaks. And then uh, and this is the whole principled shader setup. And then what I'm doing is I'm combining that shader, I'm combining this whole thing with this whole thing using a mix shader. Okay, And then I'm just using the opacity map. It was just a black and white texture. I'm just using that to drive the factor, controlling our mix shader, and this is the result that we get. Okay, so there's a lot going on, but it's kind of re repeating the same thing over and over more so than it is a bunch of new things. Um, once you get comfortable mixing a couple of textures together for one slot like the base color, you can do that same thing for roughness and for metallic. And I would encourage you to try that and play around with it um, to help get a better understanding of of how it all works together in order to get a nice final result. So I think that's it for this. I've been rambling for an hour. Hopefully that helps make it a little bit more clear, and it certainly will give you some information to kind of take your, your scenes the, f the final little bit to help them feel more realistic. Next week we'll move into rendering and a little bit of kind of post-processing. Oh, vending machine, which I have suspiciously ignored. I'm going to cover the vending machine. I'm going to do just a, a very quick how I did it in um, Substance Painter.
So let me save this here real quick. So I am not a expert in substance painter by any means. And I don't want to represent myself as such, but I will cover how I did it in Substance Painter. I'll show you kind of the, the super basics of getting uh, some materials on, on an object in Substance Painter and then bringing that back into Blender. Um, but I, I will also, in that video, link to proper Substance Painter tutorials uh, so you can get a, a better feel. But what it allows you to do is get some really great effects very quickly. So let me, uh, once this swaps over to Material Preview, you'll see what I did in Substance Painter. Just take a second. This is a big scene. Okay, so here we can see, um, if I zoom in here, oops, this is, there it goes. Oh. Very chunky. I am wouldn't be surprised if Blender crash here. Okay, so you can see kind of all this edge detail. We get the like the paint is worn away from the edges, and we've got grunge and, and texture on it. We've got little rust spots. Now, if we come down towards the bottom here, okay, you can see this even even clearer. All this stuff was done very quickly in Substance Painter, just using the default assets. Um, so anything that you can do with the free student license you, uh, is is what I did here, and then the the text and the numbers I did in Photoshop. But I'll go over all how I did that in um, in the next video. Like I said, it's going to be a short video, or shorter compared to the amount of uh, shading that gets done. Just kind of covering how I did it, not how Substance Painter works. Not the ins and outs, because honestly, my understanding of Substance Painter is still very preliminary. Um, I haven't been using it that long, but I know enough to get some decent results. And so I figured I would at least share that with you so you can follow along to that point. And then I'll share some more um, resources so you can take your learning uh, even further. So I will see you then.